Anthony, we've uh, known each other for uh, uh, many years now, and uh, <laughs> when I first began thinking about multiple universes, you were the, one of the people that I uh, enjoyed talking to, and then it was exciting, and it was uh, dynamic, and really wild speculation, and fast forward to today, and it's almost conventional wisdom. Everybody <laughs> talks about that. It's obvious people try to figure out a lot of details about it, but uh, let, let me ask you honestly, are you sure <laughs> that there are multiple universes? Am I sure that there are multiple universes? You almost have to say no to that question, but I'll, <laughs> I'll say I'm pretty confident. And I'm pretty confident because I think uh, of the, the continued success of inflation as an explanation for the observed universe. So The beginning of the universe and how it, uh, how, how it formed. The Big Bang Theory is, is pretty helpful, but to really understand where the sort of initial state of the Big Bang universe came from, you need some sort of theory. It's mm -hmm. not it's not generic, the sort of smooth, homogeneous, right. you know, right fluctuations and so on. It's not just going to pop out. And I think inflation, the theory of inflation, where there's this exponential expansion, is a beautiful theory that provides that sort of early condition for the universe. But inflation does carry this really interesting implication of multiple universes and the multiverse. And I think fairly inevitably, now there's no theorem like that. In fact, there's no paper. There's... Uh, when I give talks about this, I sometimes bring in a little scribble that my, I got my three-year-old to draw. Mm. Um, the idea being that if you have your three-year-old draw some scribbles and you scale them the right way and turn them into a potential energy function for the mm. inflaton field, almost certainly if you have inflation, you'll also have eternal inflation. So, you know, you, you have to guide your three-year-old's hand very <sighs> carefully if nice. you want to make a model that's not eternal. And so I think that's not a proof, but I think if you believe in inflation, you have to at least grudgingly accept that there may well be eternal inflation. Now, what I've been interested in lately, uh, and really over since like 2007, is thinking about whether there's a more direct way, rather than inference, that we can look for eternal inflation. And one such mechanism is that in eternal inflation, one of the ways you can form new universes is bubbles, bubble nucleation. And we would reside inside one of these bubbles, and it could collide with others. And so, how, how would that work? Just uh, you'd have sort of a, uh, a a a branching off, a ballooning off, like a like an aneurysm in a in a blood vessel. It kind of breaks off, and then it's a separate uh, entity. That's a separate universe within the same space time that we exist. Well, there's a few different ways of thinking about these baby universes. One is where it kind of pinches off and, and is off in its own place. And this is a little bit different. This is, this is one in which there's a sphere kind of, suppose it happened right here. There'd be a sphere that formed right here of a new phase, of a lower vacuum energy. And that then starts to accelerate outward and eventually gets to the speed of light close enough. Um, so there's an expanding sphere of this new phase. And we would be then inside that somewhere. Inside there'd be a whole evolution downward in energy until you convert the inflationary energy to radiation, and that's sort of the Big Bang. That's where the light would come from. Now, elsewhere, there'd still be regions of the universe that bubble, even though it's at the speed of light, hasn't hit yet. Now, suppose another bubble forms over there somewhere. Then our bubble smashes into it, and that leaves kind of a dent or, or a bruise or something in our bubble. Now, from the inside perspective, when we look back at the early universe, we're looking back at the conditions that are sort of after the formation of this bubble. So we can see that bruise. And if you ask well, what would that look like in our universe, it would look sort of like, well, there's some disk on the sky. You know, just if you imagine two bubbles running into each other, the intersection is a disk. <clears throat> there's some disk on the sky where the temperature's a little lower, a little higher. And so this is an idea we came up with back in 2007 or so. And since then, we've been working to refine those predictions. What exactly does that, would that disk look like? Under what conditions would you have it? How, what's the probability? If you don't see or you, or you do see such things, what would it tell us about eternal inflation? And I think the short answer is we now pretty much understand what those collisions would look like on the sky. We have hard numerical calculations, and we're looking for them in the actual microwave background data. We don't quite see them. Um, but we're crossing our fingers that we might see them in some future data. But even if you don't, I think it's a, it's a demonstration that in principle you can rule out classes of models in eternal inflation. And in principle you could observe something that would actually tell you internal inflation was happening. 
So if you saw such a bubble collision and you could differentiate it from other such effects, uh, other, any other effect that might leave you know, a disk on the sky, which there aren't many, then it would say, wow, the, the universe really is eternally inflating. The universe is infinite in some sense. There are other universes. It would be a pretty spectacular discovery. So crossing our fingers, yeah. but uh, yeah. we'll see.